Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be attempting to resurrect this iPhone 7 which was given to me for free as it stopped turning on. I was told that this iPhone has been dead for over 6 months and they were going to throw it out if I didn't want it. So of course I accepted the phone in the hopes to get it back up and running again. The iPhone has a very scratched screen with a small crack in the upper corner, but first I wanted to test what was wrong with this device. So trying to power it on with the charger connected or without the charger connected, it shows no signs of life. So I attached it to this board here which actually measures the current and voltage into the iPhone. As you can see, it draws absolutely no current from the charger. This could mean a few things, a bad dock connector, a bad battery, or possibly a logic board issue. So to find out, I'll need to open and diagnose the phone. I did try and open the display with some LCD pliers, but that didn't work due to the waterproofing and dust seal that goes around the display. So I actually had to use a series of pry tools to get underneath there and to remove that adhesive. You can see it is quite strong and that's because it's sealing the phone up from water and dust. Once I get the display up, I can remove the four tri-wing screws and disconnect the battery and connect up a test battery to see if the phone powers on. To my surprise, it actually booted up to the lock screen but contained a password. So now that I know the phone powers on, I wanted to make sure it charged correctly and sure enough, plugging in a charger, it seems to charge up the battery just fine. I contacted the person that gave this to me and they wiped it remotely with iCloud. The advantage of doing this is the iOS version isn't updated, so it will stay on whatever iOS version that this was last used on. They also removed it from their account, meaning it's not iCloud locked and activated just fine. And if you're wondering how I brought the device online so they can actually complete the wipe of the device, I just inserted my SIM card and that connected it up to 4G network so I could uh, get that wipe happening. Now that this iPhone 7 is back from the dead, I can install the new display as the old one has a small crack and is very scratched, um, as well as replace the battery, which is completely stone dead. I'll also need to remove the Taptic engine to get access to the battery adhesive tabs, which will make it much easier to remove and I'll be less likely to break them because if you snap these tabs, it's very difficult to pry out the battery as the adhesive that Apple uses on the batteries is extremely strong so I'll need to be very careful when removing those. But now that the battery is free, I can remove it from the phone and plug it into my charging board to see if it has any signs of life. As you can see, it doesn't light up anything at all, but connecting the charger, it does actually begin to charge. So I'll let that be and I'll come back to that later. Now I can begin working on the display itself, which I'll need to remove everything on the display that I can and transfer it over to the new one. It's extremely important to transfer the home button as well as that's paired to the iPhone and replacing that uh, will result in no home button or Touch ID functionality. There's something I should mention that a lot of people don't realize is that most major components in the iPhone actually have their own serial number such as the front facing flex cable, the home button, the display and the battery. This can all be viewed by Apple and actually uh, allows them to be able to tell if a component has been replaced. Anyway, now that I have the earpiece removed, I can remove the back metal shield from the display and begin work on the home button. Now it's very important at this step not to damage the home button as each individual home button is paired to the logic board of the phone and damaging this button means not only will you not get Touch ID functionality but you'll also lose full home button functionality and that's thanks to the sensor itself isn't actually a physical button, it's just a force sensitive button so obviously if it's not paired then it won't work and the only way to get that back is to go through Apple themselves which they'll charge you a whole screen replacement and not just a individual home button replacement to try and get a little bit more money out of you uh, when you go in for the repair. So be very careful with that as it is glued down. For this phone I'm actually using a refurbished display. That means this screen is actually a used panel that's previously been cracked and then had its glass replaced. This is the best way to get an Apple screen on the cheap. That also means you're going to be getting the best possible touch, 3D touch and colors in the display which is important uh, for an iPhone. So that's really neat and is a good way to save a bit of money. And there's even companies out there that will buy your old cracked displays just to refurbish up and sell on. Now I'll need to transfer across these little water seals from the screw standoffs um, that actually hold down the display to the phone itself. This will just stop any water or dust from getting into the device. Now that the LCD is prepped and ready to go, it's time to move across back to the iPhone and reinstall the Taptic engine. I'll also need to clean up the bezels of the phone, making sure to remove all of the remainder of the waterproofing seal 
from when I remove the old display and get that ready to install the new waterproofing gasket. Many third parties don't actually reinstall the waterproofing gasket which can cause the phone to get filled with dust and also uh, ruins your chances of it being water resistant. So if you saw my iPhone 8 video you'll know what I'm talking about as the phone was filled with dirt. Now I can attach the display and I've even charged up that old battery that was in it just to test it out, see if the battery works, but also to make sure the screen is working before I install it. It's also very important to make sure you didn't damage the home button and that's functioning correctly as it should be, so it's time to install the battery. I'll need to install the new battery adhesive tabs um, and peel those off and get that battery reinstalled into the iPhone. Now I am of course using a new battery, as the old one previously has around 500 charge cycles, it's about 85% health with Coconut Battery, that's an app that I use on my computer to test out the health of the battery. With the new battery installed I can reinstall the brackets uh, which cover up the battery and LCD connectors as well as the front facing camera flex cable up the top there. So now that everything is installed I can give it a quick wipe over to remove any dust or fingerprints I may have put on the device and this phone is now ready to go. I did make sure that the screen did function one last time before sealing it up uh, and getting that waterproof gasket uh, sealing between the display and the frame because once you seat down the screen, opening it back up will damage that seal. Once the screen was sealed back down, I could install the two pendulobe screws and I gave the back of the phone a quick wipe over as it had some dust and dirt on the back. I can now remove the plastic film and install a tempered glass screen protector to prevent the screen from getting scratches and we're done. So this is it, a 32GB iPhone 7 running iOS 11.2.6. I spent a total cost of 60 Australian dollars to get this iPhone back up and running again, which is still a remarkable price for the iPhone 7 here in Australia. On a side note, I have noticed it is a little fussy with certain charges, but works fine with others. A little strange, but it's something I can live with, considering the price of the iPhone. But other than that issue, this phone works just like every other iPhone 7. It is running iOS 11 still because it hasn't been used since May of 2018. I will be keeping it on iOS 11.2.6 and won't be updating it any further and have also installed the beta profile to stop the phone from updating itself. The home button is fully functional with Touch ID and all mics do indeed work so this phone has no signs of loop disease which I did a separate video on which does affect the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus phones. Now how I could tell that the phone hadn't been turned on since May of 2018 was when I first powered on the device you could see on the lock screen itself that it said it was the 8th of May and that basically meant the phone hadn't been powered on since then. The reason Apple does this is back in the day in older iOS versions when the battery would go dead flat the date and time wasn't stored in the memory of the phone so it would reset to the 1st of January 1970 and when the user turned on their phone again it'd be disabled for around 45 years which caused people not to be able to unlock their phones. A lot of people didn't realize that you could just put a SIM card in if it was an iPhone and it would reset the date and time allowing the user to re-enter the password. So a lot of people had to reset the devices and this was a big issue back in the day. Also let me know down in the comments below what was your best deal you've ever got on a used iPhone. And on that note this has been Hugh Jeffrey's video. If you like what you saw hit that subscribe button and make sure to check out the iPhone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.